I've always had a phone or two. Ever since I was little, I had this old phone of ours, this AT&T 706. We thought it was white. We would call this the white phone. As you can see, it's yellowed in a way that vintage yellow, vintage white phones might. This white phone is from 2003, and it hasn't yellowed. This phone is from the 1990s, and it's yellowed. The color of this phone is actually is dove gray, as they called it, a light gray. Closer to white than the silvers we see on the silver-colored phones or metallic gray we see on gray phones. Usually, a gray phone today would be silver with black or white as the secondary color or an accent color. But in the 90s, phones looked pretty different to how they are now. Then, in 2011, I got a Radio Shack 43-3704 from Goodwill, and I took the base apart, but then I had lost that base in 2020. This is what that handset looks like. So this was technically my first phone with call recording and two-way radio mode, or direct link as the internet calls it, Panasonic, they call it two-way radio mode, and room monitor. But, since this was a take-apart phone, I had no idea the features of this phone. On Labor Day 2012, my phone life would take a huge leap forward. Because my grandfather gave me this handset from their old KXTG5439 set in 2012. They left the base and the Uniden Dex 1580-2 at their house. So when I go over there, I'd have phones to play with over there. And in case, at the time, he told me they might have needed them as backups, but they haven't. And I mean, very quickly, in December of that year, into my sort of collection over there, those phones went. That was my first working cordless phone. Because I had a battery, I had a power cord, but no base. That's when I learned that the small chargers aren't bases. They just charge handsets and they all register, they all work off of one base. Also at the time, I thought if my neighbor or we had the same model or similar, my handset could start communicating with that base. No, it can't. It was true in the early days with 1.7 megahertz cordless phones, some of them anyways, there was absolutely no security, no security codes or registration like we have now. But no, modern phones like that, like the 5439, you cannot accidentally connect to someone else's base. Unless, of course, it's the Panasonic KXTG2224, which I got a few weeks later in September 2012, where you can just place my hands on some random dude's base, and then it could start working on that base. Don't do that, unless you want that handset working on that random person's base. Ideally, you would know a person if you're even at their house near their base. This was my first fully working phone with a base and everything, and my first with what Panasonic calls reversible handsets, meaning the handset can charge both ways. Up until I got this phone, I thought it could only charge this way, but it can charge this way too, compared to phones like this, where the handset can only charge forward, it can't charge backward. Because the no link to base error message on this phone says place on cradle, and on the 5439 move closer to base, I started calling these reversible handset phones cradles. And I mean, it makes sense if you think about it because it lies down, just like a baby in a cradle. But I would later learn that cradle is what the handset charging area is called. However, I continue to call these reversible handset models cradles. So in my videos, you may start to hear me refer to reversible handset models as cradles instead of bases. There are many different base types in Tech with Tyler phone land. Cradle is one of them. Then corded phone, which is a base with a corded receiver instead of a handset charging area. Messaging base, which is a 
non-reversible handset base of an answering system, dialing base, which has a keypad. You've already heard me refer to these as dialing bases a few times, especially when comparing them to the equivalent models of out keypads. And locator bases, which do not have answering system controls, but some phones like this do have an answering system. And then the chargers, which are the small bases that only charge handsets don't plug into a phone line. And speaking of phone line, this is by far the biggest point of evolution in my phone collection. In 2012, I would occasionally plug my 2224 into the jack in our living room. Up until 2017, our modem would be in what is now my room, plugged into a jack behind my bed. And then it would power jacks in the house. Our phone was mounted on the wall, but as of our kitchen and bathroom remodels last year, that jack was removed. There was no longer a need for those jacks because now our phone just connects directly to the modem. And that is how, I think that is how most people have it when they have just a single cordless phone set connected to a modern VoIP service or South landline adapter. Of course, I would not keep the phone connected to the line, and I mean, we didn't really want me doing that much anyways. But then we got to a very funny story, which stopped me from doing that for good. For my brother's birthday trip, we went and stayed at a hotel in San Diego, and the message center number was star 9111. So then I tried that back at home, and for some reason, it went through as 911. And that is one of the cases where I hung up and then they called back. So you might not, that might not get through unless you know it can put in the number that they call back from. Assuming they always use one number on a cell phone, apparently it's not guaranteed to always be one number. It could be from cities away from you, for all we know. And then... That was the end of it. I would no longer plug my phones into our line aside from very special occasions. Or if I went over to my then current neighbor's house who let me play with their phone, I would plug into their line if I was testing my phones on a line. In 2020, that was by far the biggest update yet. I got a cool device called Cell to Jack. This cool device you can pair with your cell phone and then connect a phone or phones or even your building wiring to this and then you can use your phones to make calls through your cell phone. So let's say I pick up this phone and it's not connected. So, for the eight years before I got Celtic Jack, my phone spent their, most of their life saying, check tell line, or no line. And my only line I had was the pretend wireless landline provided by the pretend airplane that we live on. That is, of course, the airplane I fly in my pretend cockpit on those two shelves next to my phone display. And it was pretty boring. I couldn't enjoy many of the features. Like, I couldn't leave messages, or now with my Callbot pre-screening phones, which luckily I got after Cell to Jack, but had I gotten those before I got Cell to Jack, I wouldn't have been able to really play with that feature, aside from the menu options, because I had no way to call it. And this feature, as I've mentioned before, does not work on the cell line. And I didn't even have a cell phone yet. But once I got Cell to Jack, everything changed. I can now pair my iPad to it, then build apps using Apple's Call Kit framework, which is developer speak for an app that integrates with iOS or iPadOS and allows third party voice over IP apps to make calls and integrate with the native UI of the system. So I could build a simulator that lets me simulate calls and make my phones ring. And then once I got my iPhone, things really changed. I can now make real calls. Now knowing what numbers to dial and not to dial. But 
Now that I'm making YouTube videos, that was not enough because I only had my real cell phone number and then to call it without using our home phone, I set up a Google Voice number and that's what GV on that GV relay label on my 9582 stands for. So to make YouTube life easier, and because I've always wanted to be able to call between my phones easily, I set up Free PBX. It runs in a virtual machine in an app called UTM on my MacBook. Then I use these analog telephone adapters, as they're called, to connect them to my phones. And then using this travel router and a range extender on the other side of the room, and tons of phone splitters. I can now make my phones ring without using real numbers. And I can do other things too, like make talking call ID say funny things. Even if you did not have a device to connect to cell to jack I would still recommend it as an entry into the world of playing with phones on a line. Because you can make it ring without a Bluetooth device involved. You just go off hook, dial 8, 9 pound, hang up, and then the phones will ring. However, you can't test features that require caller ID because there is no caller ID. However, automated call block has just picked up the call. One, two, three. I think I forgot to mention this in my automated call block video, but it does pick up after a brief second ring without caller ID. So, you can use it to screen all calls, however, it would screen all calls if you didn't have caller ID. A drawback of cell to jack is that I would have to move it between sides of my room depending on which phones I'd want to use. So, if I wanted to use it at my desk, I would plug it into the phone feed there, or if I wanted to use it at my phone display shelf, I would plug it into the split over there and then I have a long phone cord that connects to a phone on the wall. If my server is down for some reason, the FXO line in port and FXS line out port are hard relayed together so that the outside line and phones act just as if the phones were connected to the outside line, in this case, cell to jack directly. So these phones can still work even if power is out or if my server's down. This phone, this phone, and this phone have power backup, and then this is a corded phone. So but all those phones will work. So now the ATA went offline briefly because it was doing its initialization, and I can do a lot of cool things now that I have free PBX. I can do wake up calls. Okay, for some reason that decided not to work. Oh, maybe it's not liking because I'm pressing pound. It's not working, but you get the idea. Okay, my system's working. I don't know why wake up call was not working. Whatever. We don't really have to show that. Can also do echo test. I also built in a system that lets me record and play back a testing message. And I can also transfer calls between extensions. And that is why in my whenever I show smart call blocker, there's a delay when I press pound. That is because pound pound is how you do blind transfer on free PBX. So I'm going to make a call. Now, if I press pound, pound, transfer. I can transfer a call to another extension. I am sorry, but that's not a valid extension. Please try again. I am sorry, but that's not a valid. I'm sorry, that number is not valid. Or I can do attended transfer by pressing star two. I could also change pound pound to be star free or something else so that I don't have that delay with smart call blocker 
The beauty of FreePBX is that I can customize pretty much everything about the system. Yes, there are some things it can't do, but most of the things I want my phones to be able to do, it can now do. Like call waiting, I couldn't do if Salty Jack alone. Transfer. The difference between blind and attended transfer Blind is pound pound by default, and attended is star two by default. Is we have attended transfer, you call an extension, they answer, you tell them you're transferring to them, and then you hang up. Or you can press, I think it's star five, to make a conference call. Blind transfer means you don't let them know you're transferring a call to them. You just enter the extension, it hangs your phone up, and then it rings at their phone. You can also do this using Flash. You can do star eight seven before the second number to blind transfer or just make a call for attended transfer. And then you can also just hang up during the ringing to do the same thing. And then press flash while you have two calls you've dialed to conference them, like on a typical VoIP phone service. And on my HT801v2, I can also make it so if a second call is an incoming call, I can flash for freeway calling as well. So my phone-loving life has definitely come a long way. From lineless to cell-to-jack and now free PBX plus cell-to-jack.